Conclusions on Static Magnetism We have covered a lot of material in the first three episodes. In this episode, we will start with a review of what has been covered and see if we can come to any conclusions to why Ed felt the way he did in some of his conclusions so far. 1. Ed knew what electricity was. We must go further in his material before a determination of why he believed he knew what electricity is can be answered. 2. Ed saw a magnetic base for everything. So far, Ed has shown some evidence why he believed in a magnetic base for everything, but more observations are forthcoming in his writings. 3. Ed states that all magnets on the Earth are made from the Earth's magnetic field, not the substance they are made of. We have shown why Ed thinks everything is a lens for magnetic particles, and certain materials make better lenses and condense larger number of particles than can be detected easily with compasses. 4. Ed describes perpetual power. Ed believes everything is in motion and perpetual because of the particle movement and the substances. 5. Ed describes monopoles. It constantly mentions individual north and south pole magnets, but also states everything is in motion and north and south pole magnets cannot run by themselves. So monopoles exist, but always have their opposite pole against them. I believe Ed meant that the leading pole in the direction of movement is either north pole or south pole. 6. Ed indicates magnetic particles are the smallest particle. We will come to conclusions on this observation after more evidence is presented in Ed's writings. 7. Ed describes his magnetic atom, which has a north, south, and neutral line. A preliminary image has been presented, and a detailed description will be given after more evidence is presented in Ed's writings. 8. Ed said using the touch method, you can make metal wire into a permanent magnet for use as a compass. This has been shown conclusively. 9. Ed said you can also use the single swipe method from end to end to make a welding rod into a permanent magnet and not use the double swipe method or stop in the middle of the rod. This has been shown. What has not been shown is if you double swipe the rod with the same poles facing themselves, you can have both ends of the rod with north or south poles, which appears as a monopole rod, but actually has an opposing pole in the center of the rod in two neutral zones at approximately one quarter and three quarters on the length of the rod, and some interesting behaviors can be experienced with this arrangement. 10. Ed describes how the streams of magnetism can be steered. This has been demonstrated. 11. Ed shows how two forces are happening simultaneously on both poles. This also has been demonstrated. 12. Ed shows the forces are equal on level ground. This has also been shown, and this is the reason you will always have a magnetic lock on all commercially available magnets when trying to place them in a perpetual rotational geometry. But with the proper geometry of magnets and magnetic fields and magnetic inductions, both near field and far field, you can achieve attraction, neutralization, and repulsion of armatures or statters or steel. And this has also been shown. More details may be released at the conclusion of this series. 13. Ed shows the balance point of material is changed when magnetized. This has been demonstrated because Ed believes all materials are magnetic, some de detectable with a compass, some not detectable with a compass. He would include all materials balance point is changed in a magnetic field. This is probably why he said he understood weights and balances. 14. The reason Ed calls the results of north and south pole magnets functions magnetic currents and not electric currents. We will be starting those experiments now. Quoting from his writing, Now I will tell you how the currents are running when they come out of a car battery, and what they can do. Now get the equipment. First, put a wooden box on floor. Open side up. 
cut two notches in middle so you can put a 1 8 of an inch thick and 18 inch long copper wire across the box. Put the wire one end east, put the other west, stay yourself west. Put car battery south side of the box positive terminal east, negative terminal west. Get two flexible leads and four clips to fit the battery and the bare copper wire. Connect the east end of the copper wire with positive terminal. Clip the west end of the copper wire with the west side flexible lead. Leave the connection with negative terminal open. It is wanting you to set up a single wire electromagnetizer with everything oriented by the magnetic poles of the earth. Break two pieces of steel fishing line one inch long. Put each piece by middle across the copper wire. One on top of the copper wire and the other under. Hold with your fingers. Now touch the negative terminal with loose clip. Hold until copper wire gets hot. Take them off. Now you have two magnets. Hang them up by middle in fine thread. The upper magnet will hang the way it is now, but the one below will turn around. It is showing that to magnetize metal with the one wire method, the field is flowing on the outside of the wire and is entering the middle of the metal. Break five inches long pieces of fishing line. Put the middle of the wire across and on top of the copper wire. Touch the battery. Hold until the copper wire gets hot. Dip the middle of the wire in iron filings. Then you will see how long a magnet can be made with this equipment. It is showing how far the field of magnetic penetration occurs with this strength of equipment and the length of steel to be used to be magnetized. Break or cut several pieces of the hard steel fishing wire as long as to go between the poles of the U-shaped magnet. Now hold two pieces of steel wire ends up and down. One wire south side of the copper wire, the other north side. The lower ends just below the copper wire. Hold tight and touch the battery. Hold until the copper wire gets hot. Now hang them up by upper end just above the copper wire. Touch battery. The south side magnet will swing south and the north side magnet will swing north. Ed wants you to cut two wires three inches long. Then hold them in a vertical orientation with one on the south side of the copper wire and the other on the north side of the copper wire. Not in the middle of the steel wire, but instead with the upper end of the vertical wires above the copper wire with the bottom edge slightly below the copper wire. And showing when hung above the copper wire and the copper wire is energized, the steel wires will swing to their proper poles. Put two pieces on top of the copper wire. The ends just a little over the copper wire. Those ends lying on copper wire. One pointing south and the other north hold tight. Touch battery. Hold until the copper wire gets hot. Take off the one pointing south is south pole magnet and the one pointing north is north pole magnet. Put one wire on top of the copper wire pointing south. The other below pointing north. Magnetize. Hang up by tail ends on the copper wire. Touch battery. They both will swing south. Put one wire on top of copper wire pointing north, the other below pointing south. Magnetize. Hang up by tail end above the copper wire. Touch battery. Both magnets will swing north. This is showing the clockwise and counterclockwise magnetic flow. Cut six pieces of fishing wire one inch long. Put them by middle on top and across copper wire. Hold tight. Touch battery. Hold until copper wire gets hot. Take off. Now, put glass over the copper wire. Put those six pieces of magnets on glass, on top of the copper wire, lengthwise just so the ends don't touch each other. Touch the battery. They all will turn across the copper wire. Now, pull three to south side and three to north side in the same way. They will lie now about one half of an inch away from the copper wire. Touch battery. They will all jump on the copper wire. Now, roll all six together, let loose, and you will see that they won't stay together. Ed wants you to make six magnets, one inch long, and show when the copper wire is energized, you will get movement from the steel wires according to the polarity of the steel wire magnets. They will turn across or jump to the wire, and when held together with light poles, they will repel each other. Magnetize one piece in U-shaped magnet. Put north pole and east on the copper wire, and south pole west. Touch the battery. 
The magnet will swing left. Now put south pole east side and north pole west side. This time the magnet will turn right. Take glass off. It is showing the same behavior occurs in steel wires when you magnetize them with a magnet or with the one wire method. Take one piece of hard steel fishing wire, dip in iron filings and see that there is no magnet in it. This time hold the wire up and down. The lower end on the middle of the copper wire, hold tight. Touch the battery. Hold until the copper wire gets hot, take off. It wants you to hold a steel wire vertically oriented on the top of the copper wire and show the magnetism will not enter the steel through the end of the steel wire. Dip the wire in iron filings and you will see that it is no magnet. Why? To make magnets with currents from batteries and dynamos with a single wire, the metal will have to be put on the wire in such a way so that the magnets which are coming out of the wire will be running in the metal, starting from the middle of the metal and ran to the end, and not from end to middle and across as they did this last time. You have read that to make a south pole in a coil end that is pointing to you, you will have to run positive electricity in the coil in a clockwise direction. I can tell you that the positive electricity has nothing to do with making a south pole magnet in the coil. Each pole, south or north, is made by their own magnets in the way that they are running in the wire. This magnet making with a single wire illustrates how all magnets are made. To summarize, it is showing the behavior of a magnetic field around a wire is similar to a magnet because there are two forces acting upon the outside of the wire. Two. The North Pole force is running counterclockwise and the South Pole force is running clockwise. 3. The force extends outside the wire quite a distance with the strength of this equipment. 4. It shows the field has to be induced from the middle of the wire across to the outside ends, not from the outside ends to the middle and then across. 5. It states that positive leading wire in a clockwise wrap has nothing to do with the south pole field polarization when the pole is facing you because the counterclockwise wrap with negative leading wire also produces a south pole field when the pole is facing you. I will explain another very important aspect of an important observation you should take note of. If you are very perceptive, you will notice in these sequence of stills, still number one is the north pole of the needles at rest. Still number two is when the copper wire is being energized. Still number three is the north pole ends of the needles being propelled north. Still number four, five, and six are the sustained arc or the magnetic field of the propulsion. And still seven is the travel back down from the removal of the voltage from a small piece of copper wire. Which is not a coil and does not contain a core, so no core saturation can occur. But you can observe a spark of discharge in the top left corner of the still. This phenomenon not only occurs in motor coils, relays, and car coils, it also occurs in short, non-coiled, non-cored pieces of wire. And I'm sure you can capture that energy as well. This is the energy we were capturing in the previous videos on what Joseph Henry called free energy or extra energy. He was the person they named the measurement of induction after, called the Henry or Micro Henry or Milla Henry. You can confirm this statement by his text, A Memoir of Joseph Henry, which is a very good material to read. 
Many years before Tesla, Joseph Henry was magnetizing needles from discharges through stone walls and thick wooden doors, many floors above the placement of the needles. He also made one of the strongest electromagnets of his time. He also was the head of the Smithsonian Institute and experimented with flat pancake coils long before Tesla. He was the true pioneer when it came to magnetic discharges and magnetic mag magnification. You will also observe the discharge in this still has two forces going on simultaneously on the moment of separation. You can also observe when the negative lead is facing you with a clockwise wrap you will have a south pole end of the magnet wire facing you and when you have the positive lead facing you with a counterclockwise wrap you will have a north pole end of the magnet facing you. In these three examples the first one is counterclockwise wrap second one is clockwise wrap and third one is a combination of clockwise and counterclockwise wrap in all three examples the polarity of the source of the magnetic particles determines the polarity of the magnetic core we will be continuing with the experiments in episode 5